Yeah, so cloud and DevOps has been, so it's interesting, like, like we've got this whole security industry that's been working so hard to improve security. And then cloud and DevOps do so much, ended up doing so much more for security um, that it was kind of funny because they didn't set out to, they didn't intend to. Um, for them, it was all about performance, but by getting into high availability, by building um, these processes that were very resilient and, and uh, uh, you know, where, where it was it was easy to make changes to code without taking services or, or applications down. Um, you know, all, all of a sudden, these very resilient services uh, could be much more secure. You know, like in, in DevOps, the, the concept of uh, immutable security, that you could just uh, um, put an application or server up in the cloud and, you know, tur turn off all access to it. Uh, because nobody needs to make... Uh, live changes to it. You know, if we need to patch it, if we need to make a con configuration change, we do that over here uh, in uh, in the development QA area, and we destroy the production instance and just replace that with a changed one. You know, so the added security we get there is, is that this is a closed box. Once it's in production, no administrative access, maybe a read-only file system. Um, you know, so even if somebody did Get, on, get onto that system, uh, it'd be so locked down they couldn't do anything with it. Um, yeah, and, and just the, you know, the concept of Agile, you know, just a lot of the processes that came out of DevOps uh, allow us to improve much more quickly. And I think that's something we're missing in security. You know, I've seen a lot of uh, three-year, five-year projects in security, and uh, you get to the end of the project and you realize it's, it's not what you intended or, or what you needed. Uh, and meanwhile, you've, you've got uh, things like Lean and Agile, you know, where you're, you're constantly have this feedback loop where you're thinking, uh, okay, is this what I need? Uh, what changes do I need to make? And you end up with uh, something typically much closer um, the, to what you were looking for and what you needed, which is, uh, I mean, the, the faster we can grow and fix things, the better because breaches aren't slowing down. You know, and, and uh, uh, objectively, we, we don't seem to be getting any better. So that's another thing. You know, cloud was new technology. And um, I feel like I don't know enough uh, security experts who are also technologists. And I think that's something you have to do. You have to, um, you have to check out new technology. You have to explore it. You have to play around with it. Uh, I, I think as a security professional, uh, to have some idea of, okay, here's how people are going to use this. Here's what's missing from it. it. You know, here's where we're going to have problems. And um, for a long time, we've had a lot of people who just haven't even gone out and dabbled in cloud. And there's no reason not to. You know, there's free tiers. You know, there's, um, you know, you can go out and play with it, and uh, you know, for very little personal cost. So I think there's some uh, some self-driven education that all security professionals need to do with technology to understand IoT and and you know, all, especially the privacy aspects of a lot of these things, you know, as they're, they're coming down the road at us. I think that when I look at an organization with, you know, varied individuals with varied skill sets, those individuals in particular, I think, are well suited for helping us solve some of today's growing security challenges. Infrastructure as code for starters is certainly an area where we know we're going to see we're going to see more more attacks and and, and other soft spots, if you would, in your organization. We already see it now with regards to exposed S three buckets and so forth. Right? Just it, again, areas areas of uh, of data leakage that are largely a byproduct of both good intentions um, and a lot of automation and, and orchestration. And that's the other half of the coin that I think Dev, DevOps, DevSecOps in particular, is really poised to help us solve for is I don't genuinely believe we have a quote unquote uh, skill shortage in security. I'm not suggesting that there are enough people to do all of the jobs. I'm suggesting that we're trying to do too many of the jobs with too many people. Uh, and there's way more efficiencies of scale that can be gained through more automation and orchestration of security. And that's where I think the DevOps culture in particular can teach us a lot about uh, how we can scale our own efforts.
I don't know if there's any one reason in particular, but if you think about modern applications, you don't just have the challenge of people having access to data any longer, or maybe a service account having access to data any longer. You now have the challenge of both of those things, as well as the application itself has needs access to that S3 bucket. Um, some infrastructure's code need, needs access to that to that S3 bucket. Uh, some serverless code may need access to that to, to that bucket. You have a lot more things accessing the data in in, in its location. Locations, and so that increases the number of, of uh, attack vectors, if you would. I mean, that might not be the right word, but if you think about now that I have to configure and make sure I have proper access across all of those things, um, not just people, but all of those things to that data, what we end up with in a lot of scenarios is sometimes the easy button is just give all the things all the access and uh, we'll come back and clean that up later. But again, I think that's just one part of the problem. It's certainly the one I encounter the most. I don't know if it's the most significant problem though. Actually, I, I do. I have great hope that we're um, on a good course here. There are uh, advocates and very great teachers out there talking about building security and insecurity DevOps. One of the people is um, She Hacks Purple, Tanya Yanka who has taught so well and so much. There's complete organizations that are um, nonprofit groups encouraging people to share their learnings and build their awareness and talking about non-confrontational, non-adversarial, so collaborative, working together to build that piece of security into a process so that we can come to the programmers and the people who've been told to run and run as fast as they can and help them do the security part rather than shackle them or pull them back by the ankles? The best practices, good good question. So I came out here to B-Sides and to RSA this year, and one of my focuses was to learn more about the DevOps, DevSecOps, I don't care what you call it. Uh, the problem that I see is that we've got siloed groups of skill sets working on different things through a pipeline that doesn't communicate. So in other words, a developer writes code, an engineer creates the infrastructure for that code to run on, a network person connects the machines in that infrastructure to do its thing. There's too many discrepancies in too many places for that to fall apart to where security is not built into that process. So what I've learned and what I've seen is that really teams of multi-talented people, developers, engineers, network technicians, security people need to own services and products and and they own the security of those products. It's not the security team's responsibility to make sure security is on, on that service or that infrastructure. It's not just networking, it's not just engineering, it's not just DevOps. Everybody owns that service and that security has to be maintained by everyone in that group. So if one of them falls down, the rest have to pick them up. 